Bad movie drinking game. 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 It was a nightmare. Too many leaping zombies. Too much voiceover. It was all supposed to be a harmless drinking game. Marcus, he's a good guy, if not a little bit goofy. Jeremiah, he's the life of the party, but not much going on behind the beard. Franklin, we call him the Snake Charmer. Sam. Damn it. Like I said, I ain't done this week. Why are we singing? That's just because we just watched Uva Bowl's wide release debut in the United States. House of the Dead. His opus, if you will. His, I don't know. It's not his opus. This is his opus, I, I guess, would be. Uh, what's the, the. Alone in the Dark. I don't know. Uh, Art uh, of America? His open. That's like his. Blackwoods? Uh, <laughs> Blood Rain? No, no, I feel his name is his, 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 his Dungeon Siege. Yeah, yeah, Dungeon yeah. Siege is his opus. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Dungeon that. Siege is his Raging Bull. We just watched his Mean Streets. Alone yeah. in the Dark is his taxi driver. So it's postal. Oh, God. His that's his King of Comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. This, yes. all, this is all making sense. But why? You may ask yourself, why would we watch House of the Dead? Why all this one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the purpose of Bad Movie Drinking Game, we watch the bad movies for you. We build you a drinking game so you and your friends can enjoy it at its maximum potential. Uh, this is an amazing film. How does everybody feel about having seen... House of the Dead. I again. feel bad about the fact that I've seen it more than I've seen There Will Be Blood. I love that. <laughs> but there's a lot of blood in this film. There will be blood oh and bubbling cauldrons of lakes. So this is based on the number of times we've seen it. So I've seen it more times than the number of times I put quarters into a machine to play this <laughs> part. <laughs> You're not the only one. I've played House of the Dead a good bit. It was a great lie gun game, but it, it did was. not translate at all to no, the. No, because there was no real story to it. It was just <laughs> monsters are jumping at you on a screen. Shoot them before red marks indicate that you were hit and or died. I will That's say this, this is the first time that I realized that the main character of this was supposed to be the evil mad scientist villain. Yeah, Dr. Curian. You got a last name? Curian. Oh. Man, there you really? Because of what happened. Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much you had Thomas Rogan and Dr. Curian, and out of the movie that they were supposed to make, all you needed was those two characters and maybe G somewhere in there as well. No, no like, the, there were the two agents that, like, I don't think they really had names. Well, that was, uh, Do uh, Thomas Rogan was one and G was the other. Oh, okay. Those were the first two in the original one, but okay. I guess, um, this was supposed to be a prequel? I think I figured that out each time I've watched this movie, but then I forgot it already. I always forget. Because it wasn't quite a house either. It was like a habitat of humanity. <laughs> yeah, this was, this was a much, construction I, project under the works. I built a habitat for humanity house, and even the slipshod nature of those is still put well put together better than the actual house in this movie. The game prominently featured a giant mansion full of zombies and murderous creatures. Uh, this is kind of a shack with a living room, a laboratory, and an underground mine. And no well, bathroom. Well, they also have a closet full of gunpowder. Oh, that's, yes. like, that's true. They but again, have a storage closet full of no bathroom. So this is not a house. <laughs> sorry. I well, it's a house, well. but it's oh, not sorry. a home. There's no home of the dead here. <laughs> There's no monogram towels. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the plot of the film of House of the Dead is oh, told in a ridiculous frame story to where you're not quite sure who the narrator is for a good bit of it. But uh, basically, uh, a bunch of kids are invited to the rave of the was it the year the rave of the year 
uh, on an island in the San Juan Islands, which is very clearly filmed in Canada. A rave consisting of about 20 to 30 people. And you'll never guess who's here. Yeah, nobody. Oh. They were all dressed casual. They're all just guys. Yeah, like Will Sanderson's character literally comes in a blue button-up shirt to a fucking <laughs> rave and cat. No, no jeans and cross trainers. Yeah, yes, it, it's, <laughs> but it's very clearly Canada. They're going it to the looks sand cold. Water. The trees look like a forest in Canada. Yeah, it's a very deciduous so forest <laughs> because it is in no way. So it, it's not Caribbean it's or so horrendously it, Canadian. It's the hoose of the dead. Yeah. <laughs> This feels like someone told an alien what a movie was, and then that alien decided from a very detailed description of what a human film would be like, <laughs> let's just, just let's try to make that. No, that's absolutely perfect, because this movie played out like the director sort of knew how a movie worked, the cinematographer sort of knew how to like set up shots, the screenwriter sort of knew how a narrative kind of worked, and I'm gonna have to call bullshit on that. Because <laughs> that's where things absolutely do not add up. Because if you do understand narrative in any way, shape, or form, then you'd have to have a beginning, middle, and end. And I don't even know where the story really started. Well, I think that's a good point to give uh, the audience a little bit of uh, information about Uva Bowl. Uh, Please uh, visit the Wikipedia page for him. You'll get a lot better detail. But using a loophole in the German tax code. He is able to make films that are almost guaranteed to fail. Uh, however, the investors will be able to write off the loss and then uh, on their taxes and then keep the profits on the DVD where he's bound to make even more money for whatever reason. Uh, so th he made a series of films before that loophole was closed uh, a few years ago. Uh, and, and they are almost all video game adaptations and they are almost all completely terrible. Almost all. He made a couple of movies in Germany, and his movies are taught in German film classes. They're taught as an example of how yeah. not to make a movie. So yeah. what a protagonist is? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Well, he They're made, called, it's called German fried movies. Yeah, and it's oh. supposed to be sort of like a Kentucky fried movie. Yeah. Uh, so one of the his notable stylistic choices of the For film. For this movie, yes. Uh, well, something I've never, I don't believe I've ever seen before. It's quite audacious. It's yeah. It's a bold artistic choice. Bodacious. In the middle of action sequences of zombie violence, he edits in scenes of zombie violence from the video game. I, I actually love. Not from anybody actually playing it either. If you notice, there's always like a press start. Yeah. Like flashing on the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like they could, they didn't have the quarter to actually start the yeah, game. Yeah. So we're just arcade. gonna set up this camera stationary in the middle of an arcade for life. 30 minutes and then leave it recording. You can see the reflection of the camera. No bother to actually hide that shit at all. I kind of want to talk about the implications of the shots. Uh, <laughs> okay. Please you guys, do. Please do. you guys think it's supposed to represent what we're seeing in the actual movie? There's only one point in the movie where that would even begin to make sense, and that's when they're in that tunnel. Because yeah. they cut oh, yeah. two there's shots a, from the game. There's a total a mine tunnel. shaft in there for no good reason. The best way I can describe it is if you ever go to a bar or go to, well, go to like Applebee's karaoke, for instance, <laughs> and you hear someone, they don't really know they can't sing well, but they sing loudly. <laughs> they know, and passionately. Loudly and passionately. <laughs> You're saying that this movie is like a goth girl screaming, bring me to life? Pretty much. <laughs> it's just, it, it's entertaining for all the wrong reasons. Because it just keeps bombarding you with nonsense. And it's so loud. It really never lets up. It's no. kind of fantastic. It's like, oh, wait, wait, are they going to address the mistake they made? No, nope, they're just going to keep making We're, we're going to plow through this because the finish line oh, is in sight. <laughs> Only a loophole in the tax code could have made this movie possible to make. Because I would have thought after making this, this director would have gone away and never been seen again. But instead he's yeah, become I sort mean, of like a this, celebrity. Like, of a sorts. lot of this stuff is just under the radar enough that he doesn't really have to suffer any kind of consequences for it. Like if uh, Spielberg were making shit like this, he wouldn't be a Spielberg. Sure. This is a uh, just a fantastic example and that's why I wanted to pick it as our first entry. And what we hope will be uh, a fun, uh, episodic run 
of bad movies that we are going to conjure a drinking game for. Now, we cobbled one together beforehand, and I'm going to I'd say we should go by one by one, uh, recounting the rules that we abided by, uh, starting with Jerry. Uh, one of the first ones is whenever there was bad voiceover at any point in the movie. Yes, there's a series of scenes. <laughs> There's just shots of boats from afar <laughs> with lots of dialogue <laughs> over them. Just maintain speed and distance. Hey, Cap, I can get a little closer to him. No, let's keep our distance and see where he's headed. I know where they're docking. Drop me off on the other side of the island. Whenever one of those uh, those happened, we drank. The second uh, rule uh, were the leaping zombies. <laughs> the zombies those are incredibly acrobatic. You would think. Tissue jam damage would so they would not have the ability to achieve uh, the vertical heights that they do. It doesn't stop them, they land with a foam like a cat. Uh, <laughs> Those ligaments are still intact. They're they are still just... there. Okay, so there's that one massive scene in the middle of the movie that's just the most drawn out shootout that you've ever seen. It's, but, it's seven minutes long. But the most important thing is that within every other shot change, the gun that someone is holding will switch to a completely different gun. And it's so noticeable that you have to take a drink. Basically, any scene where they stole a shot from the House of the Dead video game, and just edited it in, which left us questioning whether it was supposed to be something they saw. Or... I mean, should, should we warn people about that shootout? Because that's going to happen a lot in that particular yes, scene. Yes, when yeah. you when you get to the portion of the film, after uh, uh, with Will Sanderson's character, you'll remember him because he's the one with the, the shirt stained with poop. Lazy Just remember eye. that. We haven't discussed that scene. And lazy eye. <laughs> Slightly lazy eye. Uh, he dies. Get Make sure you get all your drinks ready at that point because it is going to be on at that mm -hmm. point. Uh, not only that, uh, it also brings in uh, another point, the uh, orbiting camera. Am I correct? Uh, yes, there yeah. is a lot of orbiting. Like, everyone gets to stand on, like, an isolated stage at some point. The shots before and the shots after don't really uh, line up with the orbit. The orbit is just them. And then all of a sudden there are zombies right around them. But in the orbit, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever that happens, you should take a drink. What about wood touching? Oh my <laughs> yeah, god, yes. Yeah, yeah. Wood yeah. touching, yes. So, anytime a zombie uh, lurches into frame out of nothing, he will clutch. <laughs> <laughs> Just clutch it with, and leave a bloody handprint or something. Whenever that happens, take a drink. Minor one, one, one minor one. Um, anytime you see Sega. <laughs> the shot yeah, of Sega. Uh, at the rave, there is a Sega logo that we will ret you'll return to many, many a time when you see that uh, drink. We're essentially chugging it down. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing the trailer for the first time. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what to expect. And just that one part, whenever just like, how do you kill something that's already dead? And I'm thinking to myself, yes. It's an interesting and it philosophical says, conceit. And it just says, any way you can. And I just <laughs> burst out laughing. <laughs> All I remember. I laughed for the rest of the trailer. Is this the end? Or only the beginning? Please drink responsibly and have... A, a friend drive you home. <laughs> or just stay at home yeah, and watch this. You'll be fine. Stay in the house. House of the dead. <laughs> we should at least uh, either break or end it off with a um, with a little rendition of the House of the Dead. Everybody Are together. It has to be so, loudly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start off with, with the bass line. <laughs> Never to this day have I seen a movie that splices in footage from a video game that is that. I think Mortal Kombat Annihilation would have been better if it had that in there. Or Street Fighter had footage from the Street Fighter game. <laughs> Which one? Well, that would have been a better movie adaptation. It would have been incredibly confusing. What? What?
I wish they'd make a new animated Street Fighter movie, but they edited footage from the movie. <laughs> Street Fighter, the game, the movie, the game, the movie. With the camera? With the <laughs> 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 it's the spirit of Uva. Yeah. <laughs> the camera for the film? <laughs>